Praise God. Praise God, church. Isn't God good? Amen. So today we are going to just continue to share the goodness of God and what he gives us. You remember we've been going through a series of different areas to encourage us to manage the journey that we are doing. We are moving with him. The other time we mentioned how we should fear not. And the following Sunday we talked about uh, our beloved Jesus. And during the overnight it has been another powerful time. God is delivering us, getting us out of the bondages, out of the hindrances that make us fail to enjoy that love that we have with him. Praise God. So today we are going to continue to share briefly what God has put on our hearts. And uh, I wanted to continue in the same direction, but this time I want us to take this word as the center of our message, which says that those who know they are God would do exploits. So that the, the heading and the title of our message is those who know they are God. Praise God. Those who know they are God. Are we together? Let's, um, Father, I want to thank you. Thank you so much that you have allowed us to stand in this place, in your presence, in your position, to share who you are, your truth of your word. Lord, we want to soak ourselves, I soak myself in you, Lord, that you take charge, take over, and make our hearts and our minds to receive from you. Just take charge of this voice and this uh, mouth and speak to our hearts. Let our spiritual lives receive that portion that is prepared and planned for us today. And even those who are far online, speak to us, Lord. Prepare minds, prepare the emotions, prepare everything within us to receive from you so that we can be able to be those very vessels that will walk with you the armies that will win the battle with you and the right time we shall be joined with you where you prepared for us in your house in jesus name we pray amen daniel 11 uh, daniel chapter 11 from verse 32 and such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries but the people that do know their god shall be strong and do exploits amen up to 35 and they that understand among the people shall instruct many yet they shall fall by the sword and by flame by captivity and by spoil many days now when they shall fall they shall be holpen with a little help, but many shall cleave to them with flatteries. 35. And some of them of understanding shall fall to try them and to purge and to make them white even to the time of the end because it is yet for a time appointed. Amen. Now when you read this portion of the, this verse, this, this chapter, it shows you that those who know they are God, first of all, it says that those who do wickedly against the covenant, he shall corrupt with flattery. That is New King James Version. But the people who know they are God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. So in the midst of the wicked, uh, the wicked uh, doing whatever they are doing, but those who know they are God shall do exploits. And those of the people who understand shall instruct many. Yet for many days they shall fall by sword and flame, by captivity and plundering. Now, that shows you, yes, in the midst of doing exploits, they may be that part of going through some hard time. But he says, now when they fall, they shall be aided with a little help, but many shall join with them by entry. Now, that shows that many 
are supposed to be doing exploits. And we will do exploits. But in that journey, there is a time when persecution and battles and, and fights and, you know, he talked of captivity, he talks of falling by the sword and flames. Now he says, the little help will be given to us, but many shall join them. Meaning, there are those who will fail on the way. They will join the wicked path, the wicked camp, if I can use that word. So, meaning that our journey to continue to do exploits, we must be ready, knowing that there is that time of trials and temptations and persecutions and resistance. But, and many, that's when they fall. They join them. But if we continue, he says, when you go to 35, he says, and some of those of understanding shall fall to refine. Falling, I mean, uh, to my understanding, it's like that moment when you feel like as if, as if God is not there. It is too tough. You feel you cannot even perform what you are supposed to do according to the promise of doing it. But he says, to re that fall is for purposes of to refine them, purify them, and make them white until the time of the end, because it is still for the appointed time. This is a prophecy from Daniel. When you read the, the book of Daniel, he got the prophetic word, which will apply in that appointed time. How many of us are aware that we are in the end times? You are fully convinced in your heart that indeed we have started end times. So I believe if those are end, we are in the end times, this must be the appointed time where we are. And I can tell you, the church feels like it's so down, like we have no voice, no strength, no authority. We are in that season. But as uh, Kakapi was saying that they're re repositioning, we are in the season of being purified, of being made white, so that we can be able to do those exploits. Are we together? Praise God. Praise God. Let's read Haggai 2, 9. It says, The glory of this latter temple shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place I will give peace, says the Lord of hosts. Amen. God revealed this so many years before we are even Christ came. And this prophecy, to my assurance and belief, we are in these seasons. This is the very time. Praise God. And I'm bringing this so that we can be able to, you see, when we do not understand the time that we are in, you'll keep hoping and thinking of, of, of and you can be easily taken. But if we know that indeed we are in those very seasons, the very time, when we know that it's the end, then we can be able to stand in our position and we'll be ready for the repositioning. Because if we are not prepared and not ready, I believe the ship may leave us or the boat, the move may move, leave us. So this is a, a prophetic word which is confirming that the later, later days are going to be greater than the former. So if the latter days are going to be for, uh, greater, who are the people that are supposed to be operating in that time? So we all know that we are in those very end times. So that means you and me, we are the ones to stand and fulfill that. We need to move in that. If you have it in your mind, you'll be able to, to do it. So as long as we don't know you will not identify the identity of who you are and the strength that God has given you. So I request that as we read this word, position yourself. Let's get beyond our needs. The needs are there and God will meet them. But let's try to see that we align ourselves with him and other things shall fall in place. Praise God. We are going to continue to, you see, these are prophets, the prophets of the Old uh, Testament. We've read Daniel, we have now seen Haggai, but maybe you may think 
that those are prophets of that time. Maybe it happened during the time of Jesus, but I don't think it's true. Yes, he did what he did, but himself, he said it also. Meaning, it, is still, it was expected beyond Jesus. Let's read John 14. John 14 from verse 12. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. Continue. Continue up to 21. Okay. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. A little while longer, and the world will see me no more. But you will see me. Because I leave, you will leave also. At that day, you will know that I am in the Father, and you in me, and I in you. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Praise God. Just a break, I will call you again, but let's first uh, go through this. You know, uh, there's a time when you are reading the word, I think I've ever listened, I think it was Herbert who was preaching, it was like you feel like you want to chew it, like to eat it up. Hmm? This word is so sweet that every word, every statement you don't want to leave, you want to take time on it. So to me it is blessing me so much. I, I don't know for you what you feel, but you listen to these words again, I'm going to repeat them. It says, most assuredly, that is an emphasis. I said to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. Before even we go further, he who believes in me, the works I do, he will do also. Can you imagine? Have we done what Jesus did? Just check yourself. Why? <laughs> that question should be a challenging question to us. I believe it's high time that we get out of just living anyhow. You're a Christian, you have all it takes. You, and what is, what's, where is the impact? Okay, in your, in your own, no, no, okay, let's not look at the bigger, bigger thing. You may not start a church, you may not be that big person with a big title, but in your world, in your area, if you're a child in the home, at least do something with your colleagues, with your siblings, or with your friends. What have you done? If you're a big man, with your friend, what have you done? What you feel like, indeed, like what Jesus did, I've done it. Because I believe in him. Do you think the word is not true? It's true. What stops us? Why? Why are we not strong enough? to do what we're supposed to do. Maybe we didn't know. Did we know about it? Can I see by a show of hands? Do we, do we know that we can do what Jesus did? I want to see the hands. <laughs> Some people are not, they are failing to put their hands up. Because why are you not putting your, you know the truth, but you feel like really embarrassed, why? Hmm? We have not been moving by that, you know, to that standard, why? So, to me, I think this is something which is like, it should, you know, piercing within our hearts to check. <laughs> Why are we not doing what Jesus did? So, the Holy Spirit had to do something for us. <laughs> Amen? Amen. So, if Jesus was able to do this, and he says, you will do, as long as you believe in me, the works I do, you will do also. And he adds on, by the way, it's not only that. He says, and greater works than these 
you will do. Because I go to my father. Praise God. Meaning, right now, we are in that season because he has gone to the father. So we are in the season of doing greater. Because he says, and greater works than this you will do because I go to my father. Praise God. So everything is ready. The ground is prepared. The spiritual environment is prepared. Maybe we did not know exactly where we are supposed to operate from. Praise God. And then he continues to say, and whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may, glor may be glorified in the Son. So he will do it, not even for your sake. As long as you ask him, he will do it so that he can glorify the Father through his Son, who is that name that we are praying through. Amen. And he says that if you ask anything, in my, he's emphasizing by the he's repeating himself so that it can drop into our ears and in our belief that system of ours to know that indeed he will do it. He says, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Praise God. Praise God. Then he continues to say, but how do we do it? How do we connect with him? How do we manage to do that? He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, he will give you another helper. Remember, he's still preparing us. That time he was just talking to his disciples to encourage them. He says that I will also ask the Father to give you another helper. Meaning that the journey is going to be tougher. But he says, I'm going to ask him for your helper. And remember, the helper is always stronger. By the way, women, clap for yourselves. You are helpers. Meaning a helper is stronger in terms of the, what you are doing, what you are supposed to do. So women, you have the opportunity to work as the helper who is the Holy Spirit. Praise God, women. Do I have women in the house? I don't hear you excited about this. And I know men are very happy they are not jealous. Yes? Men, do I hear you? <laughs> Can we clap for the Holy Spirit? <laughs> yes. Praise God. You are so honored that God cares so much about you men and he had to send women to help you. You will have special love before him. So praise God. Here he says that he has given us, he's going to ask him to send a helper. Did the helper come? Did he come? He came. And then he says that this helper will abide within us forever. Praise God. The spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. Now, that makes us so special. The world will never receive this. This helper will never go there. So we have the helper within us. And he will live for, with us forever. And then he says, because they never see him, no one, no, not even know him. But you know him, for he dwells within you, and he will be with you. Then he says, that is so sweet. He's so, uh, you know, it, Jesus talks like a real parent. He says, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Praise God. What's the manner of love? Hmm? I will not leave you as orphans. I will be with you. He sends the, the helper. He's saying he will be with you. You are not going to be alone. Praise God. What assurance. It's so sweet, so good. Hmm? And he continues to explain, a little longer the world will not see me. But you, you will see me. The world will not see him. They don't see him until the day, that last day when he will come to reign for, forever. So at the moment they don't see him. But for us we see him and we are with him. He says that because I live, you will live also. Are we together? So there's nothing that shall swallow us up. Because he lives, we shall live. And that day you will know that I am in my Father 
and you in me and I in you. Amen? But there is a condition. He who has my commandments, who keeps them, is, is he who loves me. So if we want to walk this journey, spirit comes back. You know the word says, seek the kingdom and his righteousness. How do we go into, how do we manage the righteousness? Is to keep his commandments. And then he says, because if you keep them, that's a sign that you love me. And he who loves me will be loved by my father. And then he says, I, I will love him and manifest myself to him. You know, manifest myself. Manifest, I, I believe the word manifest means that you'll be able to, to demonstrate who he is. He will be manifested in us. In whatever we do, he will be manifested because we are one with him. Now, um, I need to come, uh, read for me from verse um, 23. Verse 23. Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words, and the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while being present with you, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You've, you have heard me say to you, I'm going away and coming back to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice because I said, I'm going to the Father, for my Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it comes, that when it does come to pass, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming, and he has nothing in me. But that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, so I do. Arise, let us go from here. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God to the extent that because he loves the Father, that's why he says that the rule of the world is coming, though he has nothing in me, but because he wants to manifest the Father and to show the love that he has with the Father, he accepted to die. Praise God. So for us, even the little temptations and the little trials, quickly we run to give up. And when he has assured of his presence, of his love, of imagine to the extent of saying that he's going to make a home with us. To me that word, some, all the time I look at it and wonder how God is so special. Imagine to say that I will make, the Father will make a home with you. Hmm? Verse 23 it says, we will come, okay, it says that uh, if you, anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my Father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. Do we think about that? I think we've talked about this many times. To make a home with us, praise God. A home with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. What demon can stand that? What disease can stand that? What type of trial can win you. I think something is just wrong somewhere within us because they are always right and they cannot, they, they, they are all perfect and faithful to keep their word. But for us, that means on our side, that's where there is an issue. Praise God. I pray that today God will open our eyes to see him and to know that love and the faithfulness of who he is 
Imagine to say, I'm not living as an orphan. I'm going away. But the helper is here with you. The Holy Spirit is with us. Praise God. Praise God. By the way, you have the Holy Spirit around you. Whether you feel it or not, the day when the Holy Spirit leaves you, that's when you know. I think I don't even remember if I've ever told you how one day I disobeyed God and the Holy Spirit completely got off from me. I didn't know. It was my first experience to know that I've been moving with him, living with him without knowledge. He told me to do something. I reasoned. I refused because of fear of man. I was like, how do I begin? Where do I start? I reasoned and time passed. Because I remember I had sat in church and he says, move and go and talk to the pastor. And I felt like that pastor didn't know me. I didn't, like, never, never, I've never connected with him. And he says, go there now and he's waiting for you. But I refused. I didn't intend to refuse, but I just feared. I said, like, how? What do I say? How do I go? And time passed. I moved out. The voice was really, really so strong until the time passed. So as I was going away, the Holy Spirit completely got off my... I, 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 I can't say whether my body or what, but just left. And I remember I felt so, so, so naked, like I felt naked. You know when you have no clothes on your body? You feel so vulnerable for anything. It was like as if any time any like bullets or arrows or things are going to kill me. I felt so bad. I remember I could not control myself. I start, started weeping and weeping and I was walking. I started pleading, oh Holy Spirit, I kindly I'll give me another chance, give me another chance, give me another chance. It took me a week to get back to order. That was my first time to know that I'm always covered and dressed and protected. So the Holy, Spirit, the Holy Spirit is covering us. Praise God. So we don't know now until when we live without him. For me, I, I tested that. Brethren, I want us to know that God has no jokes and, and he is not a play, just, he's not just playing games. If his word is said like this, it is that. Would rather, would, would fit in or lose our lives. Praise God. So it's high time that we get very serious and get out of mediocrity and mediocrity and uh, living half, half, half. Yes, you're a Christian, but where's the impact? Make a difference. Make a difference in your world, in your area, in your, wherever you are. And your eyes are able to see wrong things, wickedness, people are lost. People are lost in their world. They don't know. By grace, you have the knowledge. What have you done? And what destroys us and what hinders us? Because we reason. Secondly, we are not ready for, for paying the sacrifice. The sacrifice of your time, sacrifice of being misunderstood by the people around you because the world system is totally different. You want to identify with the world system. I'm saying this because it affects all of us. But can we make a difference? For the love of him who left his glory and came here and opened the door and the helper who is within us, who speaks to us every time. But many times we do not listen to his, that gentle voice. Other things shout within our minds. Our human desires and kind of things are so loud and we listen to them. The cares of the world, praise God. I want to end by giving few examples. Few examples of great men. At least they did some good work. The impact, praise God, who are able to manifest that powerful presence of the Holy Spirit in them. Most of the, some of them are even, um, I will mention majorly the, the, the Old Testament. Let's begin, but I'm not going to open the Bible, but let's talk about Daniel. Daniel that we talked about already. We read his word. You can imagine to know that the Spirit of God was upon Daniel 
because he walked with him. And why? Daniel refused to be defiled. He chose him. He also chose righteousness. He denied the provisions of the king, the provisions of the foreign god. He says, no way. I'm a special person. I'm, a, I'm, 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 a, I'm from the royal family. I cannot defy myself. I'm a prince. I cannot. I have a kingdom where I belong. I'm here as an ambassador. I cannot defy myself. That's not my portion. He refused. And it was so tough. Remember, he was a captive. Can you do that when you are captive? Imagine, you are not even in your country. No, just a captive, a prisoner. But the man and with his colleagues, they said, no way. We cannot bow down. We cannot defy ourselves. Praise God. And because they took a stand, the whole nation had to bow to their God. Amen. You can imagine in such, yes, clap for the Lord. It's powerful. That's a sign that indeed, when you take a stand, you go through trials, you go through fires, the flames and all the things that they went through. Remember in this word, it was talking about the flames and, and the captivity and the trials, but he says no and his colleagues, we are not going to bend to these rules and these laws. And God was with them. Those who entered the fire, the fourth man was there before them. Praise God. So he's with us. Let me tell you, once you stand, the world will bend and know that you are of a unique uh, identity. And I know people who stand, who normally make their position very clear. Even if they are misunderstood, at the end, they see them not dying, they send arrows of, of destruction, and, and they, they try many things to them but they cannot manage them because of that one who has a home within them. Praise God. So whatever situation you are going through, just stand. Continue, don't give up. Don't fear, don't give up. And let us remember that when you give up and when you fear, we are disappointing the one who is trusting us, who is with us. Praise God. That is now Daniel and his colleagues. Joseph, you remember? He was also a captive. Joseph, he was a slave, a prisoner, betrayed with wounds of, 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 of emotional wounds of his family. It was so tough, but he didn't give up. Temptations after temptations, the man refused. They even forgot him in the prison. But the day, that appointed time, it came and the whole nation of Egypt recognized him as a prince and he took charge. And by the way, the one good thing where a, a, a child of God is, you take that authority because he says that whatever you ask, I'll give it to you. The other time we read how he told uh, Peter that the keys of heaven, of the kingdom of heaven is given to you. We have the keys of everything. The authority can be restored as long as we are connecting with him. The day that he created Adam and gave him that authority, it was restored by the cross. So it's upon us to take it up and use it. Praise God. David the king. David is one other example. He was that young boy. You can imagine someone to get uh, the, 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 the bear and uh, what was the other animal? The lion and the bear, they would come and find him in those sheep and then they, 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 they grab them. But according to the Bible, he says he would get it and get it out of their jaws. Can you imagine that? And I think it's not exaggeration. He would fight them. How can you fight such a young boy? Because there was something within him. Praise God. And these people were doing physical things. For us, we have the command of saying, I command you. Can you imagine how simple it is for us? This we are doing physical. But for us, the cross, the resurrection power is all abundant to us. 
the grace of God is there. He says, just ask. My father will give it to you. Just command. Life is made easy for us. Praise God. And I wonder why we cannot operate at that level. Another person I don't want to forget is Samson. You know, Samson, many times we rush to consider only where he failed. Yes, he failed. But that is a journey. Do you know the Bible says at his death point, he killed more than the ones he killed when he was standing. Praise God. God is so faithful. He will never be defeated, by the way. He cannot leave his, his, his people. He had to fight for Samson. Even if Samson failed as a human being, but at the end, he had to win the battle. You can imagine someone to see it and you make the pillars, just you push them and they break. What energy did he use? You see, for them, their time of using physical strength, physical things, it was a hard battle, but he won it all. Praise God. Obviously, it's not him alone. I believe heaven came down and the angels pushed everything. As long as your heart is again, because Samson prayed and said, please, give me another chance. And that repentant heart. David fell. I remember also David fell and then he repented. Peter and many of That's not a problem. Even if you have disappointed God so many times, he's still ready to use us. Praise God. I believe he's reminding us that this time that we rise up and take up the position. As he's, he commanded his disciples that arise, let's go. Let's move. Hmm? It is time and it's high time that we know who we are. Another one is Elijah. Do you know that Elijah was one of his kind? The person to stand and command fire to come from heaven openly. Fire. It came down and consumed everything. Altar, the water, everything. Before everyone. That was powerful. Many of them really. I say who and I live. There are many of them. Elisha did great wonders. You can imagine even the, the lepers who were also not knowing what they are going to do. They caused the, 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 the heaven to send the, the sound of armies and not of one kingdom, three kingdoms. You can imagine. As long as you have God in you, heaven will come down and do the work. Praise God. Lepers were the weakest human beings, I believe. But they said, let's move. They moved without knowing what they represent. And the battles and the season changed, everything changed in the nation of Israel. So I want to thank God that he's reminding us of this. You know Joshua? Joshua who made the sun to stop. You can imagine all creation is in our hands. All creation. Moses, Joshua, the waters. You know, every, you just speak and they listen. They listen to us. So there is no any excuse that we are supposed to use. Praise God. So, we want to again check ourselves. That's my request. We check ourselves. Why are we not able to move at that level? The duty is on us. He has provided everything. So it's upon us to take it or we lose it. And we remain there. Just there. You can imagine. What fruits do we have? What shall we present to him? He left and said, I'm going to prepare a house for you in my father's house. What are we going with? What are we putting in that house if, if we are to take the, 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 the harvest of the fruits? Praise God. Maybe for you, you are doing well. I'm still wanting more. I've not done what I'm supposed to do. So for you, if you know that you've reached there, anyone who feels like I've reached there, I've done my best, are you there? And you are sure that indeed you've done your best. So to me, I would like to challenge us that there is still a lot to be done. If we have done our best, 
Why do we see things around us happening? And there's no voice. No one says, no, 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 this cannot continue. No one. So, please, today God is reminding us that we need to once again to stand in our position and be able to do greater exploits. Praise God. Praise God. How many of you, like Peter and his colleagues, the shadow, their shadow would just heal people. That is the Peter's time, the disciples. They suffered so much, but they did great exploits. And the word says, we will do even greater. The, the latter church will be greater than the former. And we in those, that's this time of the latter church. Praise God. You are shadow to that extent to heal people. What type of power is that? What type of power? May the Lord help us. Really. May the Lord help us and make, make us sons and daughters who are, are waited, uh, wait, the creation is waiting for us. Those very sons that will take charge and make the creation rejoice. Everything was created for us. We are supposed to show who he is in this world. The rule of this world we should know who we are. So we need to stand in our position. And let me tell you, in the kingdom, there's no one who is weak. No one. No one that is weak, no one qualifies to be weak. Praise God. So, each person where you are standing, each person where you are in the position of the things that are so, so strong to you, that means there is, a miss, there is something that you are missing that we need to connect again. It's like when you connect to this electricity, you cannot remain the same. It will hit you there and there. But if you don't, you just remain weak. But the power of God is here for us. Praise God. Praise God. I request that we all stand and respond to this because our time is here. It's gone. I will repeat this word so that we, it keeps on ringing within our minds. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do. Because I go to my Father, and whatever you ask in my name, I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything, I will do it. But he continues to say, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I'm sending the helper who will abide and live with you forever. Praise God. Praise him. And he says that he will have a house within us. I want to request that as we respond to this word, First of all, let's try to renew ourselves to him. And I believe we have not been walking very perfectly as he wants us to walk. So we need to, first of all, repent and give ourselves, cleanse us, our, our minds, our emotions, our, all everything that is within us in the blood of Jesus. And also give ourselves to him to be able to connect with us, to feel, to be filled with that helper within us and to renew our love for him. If you love someone, you can die for him. Like he did, he died for us because he loved his father so much and loved us so much. So for us, what are we paying him? Moreover, saying that I just want you to manifest, I'm ready to make you manifest 
I manifest through you. I'm there with you. The helper will not leave. The, you know, just imagine the kingdom of heaven is waiting on, their, on his throne. He's looking down and waiting. What are they going to do? Are they going to embarrass me? Are they doing what I want? They are all waiting. They are watching over us every day, every second, every situation. Heaven is waiting to see, are they, is he embarrassing us? Is he going to stand for us? We are ready to help. We are ready. I wish he asks us. I wish he connects with us. Praise God. That's my feeling, and I know that's true. Every walk, every step, whatever, even when you are hungry, or when you love, you don't have any single coin. They care. They are looking at you like, you connect with us. We will give you. We will help you. Don't be discouraged. Don't be down. Don't. We are here to help. And they will open your eyes to see, touch this area. Do this. Praise God. Heaven is waiting. Can we make ourselves connect with that love? Connect with that the kingdom of heaven, all of it is watching and waiting to be used by our walk on this earth. They want to see how we walk and make him glorified. How we do greater work, greater exploits. Exploits is the word which makes it greater than, bigger than just great work. Exploit, it's beyond. He's ready. And you can walk and your shadow can do great work. I was told of Catherine Kuruman that she would stand and watch just looking at the streets and people start screaming. That's powerful. It's not just a myth, it's true. If it happened in the days of the disciples, even in our time. Praise God. Choir, please. We are going to have a chorus and then let all of us put ourselves before God in response to this word. Gentle Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others the words go, holy, do not pass me.
We give ourselves to you, Lord. Please raise your voices before him in your way. Just one minute. Father, we come before you. We give ourselves to you, King of glory. Do not pass by, Lord. We soak ourselves in you, Father. Forgive us of our weaknesses, Lord. Forgive us of the sins that hinder us from connecting with you. Forgive us, O Lord, our God. Forgive us, my Father. Forgive us, O Lord. Forgive us, my Father. When we allow the cares of the world to take us down, when our minds are not controlled by you, when they are not renewed by you, and your word tells us that we need to guard our minds, forgive us, I pray, Lord. Forgive us, my Father. Forgive us, O Lord. Forgive us, my Lord. And sweet Father, this time, we come before you, Lord. We come before you, my Father, as your own children. We have acknowledged our weakness. We have acknowledged our failures. We have acknowledged how we disappoint you. We have acknowledged the special love that you have for us. We acknowledge you, Lord. We appreciate you, sweet Father. Our beloved Jesus, our beloved Father, Holy Spirit, we love you. We love you, we love you. We love you and we give ourselves to you. Lord, today we give ourselves to you. We totally surrender that, Father, you have your way. And as you cleanse us, as you wash us white as snow, as you cleanse our minds and our emotions, as you cleanse our bodies and our words, our thoughts, O oh Lord, that everything within us is completely cleansed by you. Holy Spirit, fill us. Fill us afresh. Renew us, O oh Lord. Renew us, King of glory. Reposition us as the way you purposed us to be. Make us those very great men and women, the children who are sons and daughters, those that are pleasing before you, those that will take charge over this creation, that will rule and govern this earth, that they will speak and it will be you speaking, that we shall walk and everything will hear and know that you are God. Lord, I pray that let the systems of the world recognize and know that indeed you are still living and ruling and reigning on this earth. Help us, Lord, to be those very ambassadors, the excellencies that you put on this earth, that we are not down, uh, looked at and stepped on because of our failures. But Lord, you breathe on us once again. Breathe on us, King of glory. Make us different. Make us those very pleasing beings, pleasing temples that will walk with you, that will understand and discern and feel what you feel and be discern, discern, discerning all the time in the situations, O oh Lord, that your wisdom will fill us, your knowledge and understanding will fill us. Our eyes will see beyond what we can see. Lord, help our ears to hear your voice and hear you where you are telling us to move. Lord, I pray that you strengthen us. I give you ourselves and this church, Lord, and this ministry, and the many who are watching and listening to us, and the body of Christ in this nation, the body of Christ in the world, Lord, that you breathe on us once again and make us that church, that you say that the latter church will be greater than the former. Help us, Lord. Help us to walk with you. Help us move with you. We have tasted of your greatness. We have tasted of your great power. Miracles are happening. But Lord, we are waiting to see great, great exploits. Greater than what you did. Master, help us. Breathe on us once again and make us strong and make us able. Help us, Lord, that we shall do the harvest that will be pleasing before you. The many fruits that will, be, that will remain and where we will stand before you. And you say, welcome, faithful servants. We thank you, Lord. We bless you. We exalt you. And we trust you. Because you started this good work within us, we shall accomplish it. You will not leave us behind. You will dwell within us and live within us. And you remain with us forever. So we believe for the great harvest at the end of our journey. Lord, we know that you cannot leave us. We have tasted of how faithful you are. You've showed us how your great men, they also failed but you never leave them alone. As you promise that you not leave us as orphans, but we shall also continue to manifest and operate as mature people, mature uh, children who are working as according to you, as gods with you, for the glory of your name. We thank you, we praise you. We seal ourselves under the precious blood of the Lamb, and we seal ourselves under the, the name, which is the strongest tower, and we hide in it, and we are safe. In Jesus' name we